One of the great things about the film, and, and I don't tell this to all the talent, but I love the film. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is. Um, is it helps us to move beyond the stereotype of this kind of, it is a sort of archetypal character to start out with. And it, it helps us to do that not only in this artistic context, but also in our lives. When we think about the women, or the men, as the case may be, who are meddlers in our lives, to think about, well, what's behind that oh, neediness? That's true. Um, so, could you talk a little bit about uh, where you started from as a writer and for you as the actor in mm, trying to make that vital in, uh, in the storytelling? Well, that was actually the reason that even the, the title seemed a little negative, I thought we had to keep it because I, I really wanted to demystify the idea of a meddler and kind of another reason why I didn't want Lori to, us to see the daughter on her own without her because I really wanted to stay with the mother and stay with this person who is going through so much and um, kind of see where it all <laughs> comes Sorry. from, bless you, <laughs> kind of see where... <laughs> where it comes from and to know that a lot of loneliness and, and a lot of like <laughs> grief. <laughs> She's allergic to the press. Like oh. <laughs> and just needing like, um, you know, needing to find a purpose and find a way to, what to do with all this love that she has to give. And so, um, yeah, that's why I really wanted to peel back the layers of what a meddler kind of means and, and really see what a person is like when you know, when they're calling you. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> uh, did you have anything to add on that point in terms of how you approach the character, other than the, uh, the phlegm? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, well, I don't know. I think that's Marnie's just such a fabulous character, and I think that it was very easy to I mean, she wears her needs so clearly. It wasn't a mystery, you know, what she needed and what she was afraid of. So I just tried to suspend judgment because yeah. I, I mean, part of what makes her so funny is that she's consistently inappropriate. <laughs> and so I don't think she sees that, you know, and, and so that's what's funny. And, and, and I had to just approach it from the inside and not look at how she was perceived so I could suspend that judgment. Mm -hmm. And I think she's driven by love and she feels so fortunate to have so much of this money and extra things yeah. and, she, you know, she just is not self-censoring. She doesn't, she's just a very generous person. Now, you know, maybe the shrink is right. It's, it, a lot of it is trying not to deal with her f feelings. Right. But, um, I love the fact that she chooses that route to to survive and doesn't close the doors and drink and watch TV all day or something, right. you know, which she easily could have made that choice. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a pleasant ride and I think that uh, part of being a mom, even if you don't have loss, is, is, letting, is learning to let go and let your kids make mistakes. And as a grandmother, now that I'm a grandmother, it's so much easier. I just have the age and the distance to go, oh, well, she'll figure it out, you know. Just, <laughs> now, I don't, I don't get it unless she asks me something. I don't tell my daughter what to do with her kid at all. You know, I'm just like, oh, but I'll corrupt her later. She'll, you know. Um, and, I, and I do meddle in my kids' lives. But, and I say it's my job to be embarrassing. I'm sorry, but, you know. Sometimes I embarrass you, but it's well-intentioned, and um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I, I definitely um, didn't focus, I, I focused more on the anyway mm. than I did on the idea of, of being a meddler, because I didn't yeah. want to be on the outside judging her. Right, as That's any just, actor would do any role, yeah. right? And she sent sure. me a little sizzle five-minute reel of her mom actually doing the whole opening Ooh. sequence, <laughs> which was one of the things that just, I was like, oh my God, I, d I mean, I read the script and I thought, yeah, this will be fine depending on who else is in it, blah, blah, blah. And then I got that and I was like, oh wow, she's just wonderful and I've never played anybody like that and, and uh, you know, I'm ready and so happy to do it. <laughs> it also occurred to me, uh, I wondered what uh, Marty was like before her husband died, you know, how, to what degree she was a meddler then and how much of it is really a function of that turning point in her life uh, having changed her. I, mean, I, I don't know, maybe, to me, I guess, mm -hmm. maybe it just added desperation fuel to her natural energy fire, but... Well, Sounds what, about right. I mean, right? yeah, I mean, the film is based on my mother and, uh. and 
and moving to Los Angeles after my father passed away, and the two of us grieving in really, really different ways. And but when they were before your dad got sick. Yeah. Their relationship, was she very nurturing to him? Yes, she and, doted on him full time. Yeah. And so there was, there was a place to put all that energy and shine the light. And, you know, I'm, I actually, there's a reason I'm behind the scenes. I don't love attention that much. And, mm -hmm. of, course I, of course, I need her in, in, in every single way. And I would probably wilt away without her attention. Um, but, you know, to suddenly be the focus of it was really hard. Mm -hmm. But the truth is she was... She was calling all the time beforehand. It just didn't feel like I absolutely had to be that lifeline. Mm -hmm. And so then once I felt like, well, I don't want her to feel lonely and I want to bring her to the party and I want to, uh, you know, but then it's like, oh my God, and now she's staying at the party longer than I am and she's calling me after the party to tell me how, what my friend said. And, you know, it, the plus one has to be with the, the plus one. one. <laughs> the plus one should probably leave at the same time. But... Yeah, I mean, she she wasn't very different the same way that she's not that different now after having the film and, and seeing it and everything. But, you know, it, it it the same way that it's sort of more about healing and grieving and she moving on. She still has the ashes. She still has the ashes. I mean, we don't have a headstone. We haven't made as much progress <laughs> in real life. You know, there's no love interest. But, um, but it certainly was a way to talk about what what a beautiful thing it is to hope by helping other people. And by, That's what the know. movies are for, too. A little wish fulfillment, right? Well, exactly. Yeah. My wish yeah. fulfillment for my mother. Yeah. A bit of hobbies and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Susan, Sanford Meisner said it takes 20 years to become an actor. Uh, you had lots of early success, but is there a role or a process, looking back, that uh, cemented your self-image as an actor that made you feel like uh, you were ready to take on any role? I... Have to pop your bubble oh, here, but yes. um, I, I, I mean, I think everybody can act. Really, mm. surviving in this profession is something you can brag about mm. if you manage to put the years in. I think that there's a danger of becoming a caricature of yourself. Mm. I think that there's a danger, you know, real isn't always interesting. There's mm. things like that. But I never mm. studied acting. I never really wanted to be an actor. And after a while, I realized, well, I guess that's what I'm doing. I kind of fell into it. Mm. But um, you know, I think that there are great, raw, beautiful performances, unselfconscious performances by kids, and that yeah. you you can't top twenty years later. The the problem twenty years later is if you become a caricature of yourself, or if you become self-conscious, or by that time your ego is such that you start to pay more attention from the outside. You know, so I, I don't I don't know about that. I, I God, I hope it wouldn't take twenty years because. But it is a business that, you know, definitely rewards mediocrity every time you're looking around. So, uh, it, I, I don't know. I, I don't ever think about these things except when I'm doing a junket, so I haven't really thought about my, myself as an actor. It's been a great life and it's been a great means to other things. Um, but I wouldn't define myself, my, that wouldn't be my first word to define myself, is being an actor. And what would? I, I probably, woman, mother, activist, actor, I mean, it's a great job, and I've learned so much, and it's kind of enforced empathy, uh, you know, when you get to play other people and see that you can do and feel things you never thought yourself capable of. I think that it's great to start conversations, and, and um, you know, if you can be in a film that doesn't, um, that, that doesn't reinforce the status quo in terms of sexism and ageism and racism, then that really is important to get those conversations out there. Um, but, uh, you know, The Nutty Professor, I consider a really political film when they got you to <laughs> root for the gal to go with the fat guy. I think that really is subversive. So I think, you know, it's fun to be in this business, and if you can earn a living this way, and, and if you can survive, and, you, you know, it's not an easy business to get old in necessarily, uh, but I I don't think it takes 30 years to become an actor. I think it takes a long time to know yourself, maybe. Um, I guess I just haven't taken it too seriously. It's probably a good thing <laughs> for not being self-conscious. Yeah, it's gone all right, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's worked out for you, all right. Um, so, uh, uh, 
you know, you talked about the different grieving processes that uh, you and your mother went through. Um, uh, what, what was yours? Oh, God. Um, can't believe you haven't been asked that before. <laughs> I, I mean, it really, I, 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 think, I think my mother was living in denial and acceptance sort of at the same time, beautifully. I mean, mostly acceptance, of course, but, you know, certainly some denial in there. And for me, I would think it was just anger and depression. I mean, the truth is, the first year after he passed, it was like Jody, Joan Didion said, it's like the year of magical thinking. Mm -hmm. and. I looked around, I felt like he was everywhere, and then that year one to two, it just felt like the magic was gone and reality hit in a different way and your friends don't want to really hear about it anymore. I mean, everyone has to just go back to their lives, really, and you are just stuck going, oh, I'm never going to be the same person again. And so, um, yeah, so I, I dove straight into grief, and because my mother operated so differently, and it was just the two of us now sitting across from each other on Valentine's Day and <laughs> other things. Um, you know, we really had to figure out how how was she going to be able to talk about him all the time and say all these wonderful stories while I could just try to like focus on work so I didn't fall apart, even though we were both feeling very similarly lost. You know. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that the uh, production notes talk about is uh, you sort of feeling your oats as a director with this film, the sense of now I know mm. where I want to draw the line, where, where I won't compromise. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the contrast of feeling maybe you had to make some compromises on seeking a friend at the end of the world and, and uh, how you kind of yeah. made your space for freedom on this film? I mean, I didn't know any better, certainly the first time around, exactly how the, <laughs> the truth is that you have to fight for absolutely everything. And you might lose a couple battles, but you absolutely have to fight for everything. So I really didn't know my place entirely the first go around. Um, I was also so desperate to be a director, uh, you know, I was so desperate to finally get to direct one of my scripts that, um, uh, you know, it was sort of like anything to get there. And with this film, and probably the reason that it took so long to get made, because I started writing in 2010, two years before we made Seeking a Friend, um, was because I didn't want to compromise at all on anything. I mean, people wanted it to be a two-hander, they wanted Lori to be just as big a role as, as Marnie, which I didn't want to do, and, um, you know, can, can Lori be in her 20s and Marnie's in her 50s, uh, you know, lots of different things that I wasn't going to do, and then, of course, you get to the production stage, and it's like, well, you know you're going to lose some battles, but, you know, a Beyonce song, The Grove, The Apple Store, I mean, these things felt so essential that I felt like if one of these things doesn't come through, I don't, I don't know if it's worth it, mm -hmm. and so... Yeah. We got really lucky. We wrote a thousand letters. I mean, I can't believe how many letters were written to get favors. I mean, you know. Did you like, send Susan door to door to? I guess <laughs> we can't. That would open doors, right there. No, it was like dear Beyonce. It was like a letter I wrote. You know, I mean, it, it was surreal, and and things just through incredible people and incredible amount of work. Joy Gorman, the producer, um, you know, things just came through, and um, but yeah, it was about not compromising. And the first go around, it really was right after my dad died, and I was sort of out of body for seeking a friend. And with this, even though it was really personal, I just felt so present. You know, I felt like so there every single day. And, and you know, there's so many details that we got to make come to life. It was just so rewarding and fun and, and, and like, very, and, you know, real work, obviously. Once you're there, it's not really like, you didn't, like, get millions of dollars so you could... You know, it was like yeah, a therapy therapy camp. Yeah, it was, it was like, like a, a film, film, camp. film camp. It yeah. was. People coming in different sessions for a couple of weeks and, you know, pretty much staying in very low income. Kind of <laughs> low income. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. We got by, though. It was, it was, it was worth it. it kind of we didn't have to bring our own lunches. No, it's true. We were fed. But it was, you know, it was definitely a labor of love for everybody that was involved and I mean, honestly, everybody really wanted to come out and work with Susan. That was once Susan came on board, everything else was a little bit easier. Still want to work. <laughs> Let's hope for the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things I learned about Susan uh, this week was uh, there was an NPR interview with Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone, and they're still talking about you and uh, working with you on Tammy. And they said that. Yeah, but they didn't hire me for their next one. <laughs> How come? We were busy. We were oh, filming yeah, at the go. same time. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, but they said uh, they learned so much from you that that they were they would 
have a tendency to want to talk through everything. Uh, and they said that you, you just said, well, you know, if we just shot it, we would have had four takes in the can. We could have tried all, all those options and had them for the editing room. So anyway, uh, I got to see that a little bit. Uh, here, you helped me out uh, setting up this interview, where to put the, the camera and all that. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought about, have you directed? Have you thought about it? I've not directed officially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the yeah. thing about directing, and I've lived with a couple of directors and um, all through my life, you know, I have been offered things to direct, and it's a big chunk of time. Um, I've produced Stepmom, I've produced, you know, Debbie Walking. I, I know I'm not naive. And for the longest time, I was really hands-on with my kids, so it couldn't happen then because I just, I don't know how these women do it who have small children um, or have to, you know, watch their families. So, and then trying to find something that I really care enough about to spend a year and a half or more mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, with the post and to do those uh, fights that you have to have, as, as she was referring to in a very sweet way, but you're... You know, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot f to set it up, to keep it the way it is. I was, I've been talking about Thumb and Louise a lot because it's the anniversary, and, and really, uh, besides the fact that Ridley's a, a genius, but Alan Ladd Jr. pretty much let him do what he wanted to do. And, uh, you know, and, and that doesn't happen very much anymore. Uh, there's so much corporate committee decisions, and, and, you know, everybody loves the idea, and then they whittle it down to being... In, unrecognizable in so many things in TV and whatever. And I just don't know if I have the right personality to deal with that stuff, you know. Yeah. I, I've started a, a documentary film company and I love making, I think documentaries now are brilliant. And that kind of less, you know, more kamikaze kind of get in there and do stuff and not know where it's going for some reason I think might be the way to go. But yeah. I was thinking that maybe like in my mid-80s I should direct porn. <laughs> because I've been reading more and more about how disappointing it is. Now, I'm not an expert. I have not uh, capable enough on my iPad or phone yet to kind of really get the lay of the land, but <laughs> I think that there, we need better porn for women, especially, and if all these young kids are watching it, it's so mean and violent. So I'm thinking maybe that would be a niche I could like go this. into. Yeah. Uh, and who would say no? Uh, <laughs> my, you know who would say no? My kids. Yeah, right. My kids would say, Mom, what are you doing now? What are you doing? But I think it, after you get, that's why I think maybe in my mid 80s, because by that time they've given up on meddling in my life. Well, it's been a great pleasure talking to both of you. Thank you. Best of luck in the so film. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.